Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, Let's Play. Oh my gosh, I got missed. Uh, why is this happening to me today? Uh, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. And we are going to continue off from what happened last episode. Last episode, we met... Um, what was her name? That one girl with the no arms. Oh, I forgot her name already. Oh, come on. Can't forget her name. Come on. Think. Uh, uh, Lin? Yeah, it's Lin. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> but yeah, we we uh, met on uh, in in the art room to get some art supplies for Misha and Shizune, who apparently thought we were doing other things because I was in there alone with her. And when um <laughs> when uh, Shizune went to go look what was in there, it was just uh, Din laying there, her eyes closed on the floor or not on the floor on the desk, and she was getting very suspicious of what I was doing in there because I was in there for a while. But yeah. And then they were all just trying to, they were just teasing me like that. But anyways, let's go back into it. We leave the main building, and then leads us to onwards towards the dorm. We stop, <laughs> look at that face. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on a slightly elevated ground, with a wall and a, and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design in the school. The entire wall, made of the same kind of bricks as the building itself, has been covered with some sort of painting. Most of it is still mere sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the gray plastering that covers almost the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seems to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground besides the wall. See? The left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's because it couldn't get. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. And it was suddenly morning. I had to go to work. Or, I had to work on it. Not to go. I had to work on it, but the guys in art classes are helping me. Are help, helping with the negative spaces and bases. And base surfaces whenever. Which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better, and it's faster too. Well, she does. I like. I kind of like her because she does have that um, little characteristic side of you know comedic side. She's just acknowledging that she does have no arms, but you know that's not holding her back. She takes it with pride. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little arm with her arm or whatever of it there actually is to demonstrate. Even though I got the point already. The white cotton on her sleeve flaps around and it makes me think I could look sadder than it does. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible member of the student base's special properties has it has in the f past few days. This girl doesn't notice my dreary feeling, of course, or the fact that she lost me a while ago already and just keeps on blabbering. So that's what I'm trying to figure out if there is something I need to figure out and then figure out and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Why would the hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then it has to dry, and then it has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she made some kind of statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project? You did this? Yes, yes. All of it? Yes. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorruption. Incorrectness. Incorruptions. Good job. That's that's just the best. It's okay. You can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels like it feels that I'm way more sensitive than Lin is though. This is really awkward. Don't you want don't you wanna ask? How do you paint without hands? See? I'm an easy person to talk to you, right? With my feet. <laughs> I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at question or you're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how that she was using her feet to eat, I figured painting might not be a problem either. Now neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works pretty well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in the dim light. Do you think it's flat? Uh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that flat. You know, flat. 
like some people are no substance, no meat, where there should be some. I know a few girls who- Okay, I get it. <laughs> oh gosh, I know where she was going with that. Okay, I get it. But I couldn't really tell. I'm not that good at, with art. I can't name any artists or artistic terms. So I don't really know anything. So I don't really have anything to say. Didn't shrug the shoulder at that, saying, Suit yourself, without saying it. But And looks up at the sky as so trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you gave me a hand with the paints, I could do a little before it's too dark. I wanted to get a halogen, halogen lamp, like the ones they have at the sports shop, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Shizune. It really makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that every pair of hands is needed. Why not? I'm not really sure if I could be of any help, though. It's just mixing the paint. You can do that, probably. Do you have motor control problems? Like, you know, those people who have some. Cerebral palsy, maybe. Not that I know of. I get it. Heart thing has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Let's do it, then. Okay, good. So she sits in... Oh, my gosh. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally pick up and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. I mix them, creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form a new, monotone hue. Then sets to work every now and then asking me for a hand with something or other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is uh, is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last mill milliliter before she is satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crouch down and pick up the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea. You're the artist here. A hint of smile appears in the corners of her mouth. <laughs> Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. And more, add more white. With this explanation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly whiter. That's not good. It has to be like, like the color when you wake up and you know that... You saw the meaning of life in your dream, but can't remember it? <laughs> Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing the color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that's being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Okay, at least he's doing something. Seeing a painting being born on the plastered wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints crouching down on the paving and just looking at her work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breathing some imaginary intimacy, but it doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire present emits a completely different air as, is, as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us say, neither of us says a word for the longest time, and even those short discussions soon evolve to shorthand. Both of us developing and using weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues, as if there was some need to converse words in breath and sound. Okay, that that's that's neat though. We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. All right, transition. Am I good? Yes. Woo! Another transition. We got Katawa Shoujo with the heart and the little picture of the band-aid. <laughs> the sound of alarm pulls me out of a fitful summer. Fitful, fitful. Oh my gosh. Fitful. What? Fitful some. <sighs> okay, start over. The sound of alarm pulls me out of fitful slumber and into the unpleasant state of wakefulness. I linger under the blanket for a few minutes, gathering energy, rise, energy to rise up while making excuses as for why I haven't already. Honestly, 
I wouldn't mind staying here for all day. Stay here for all day. Okay. School is surprisingly exhausting after a long pause, and the culture shock still has not faded, I think. Still, despite getting an impression that skipping class is easy here, I don't think they are going to let me get away that easily. And the nurse is bound to keep breathing down my neck with the talk of exercising as well. So eventually I do rise up, swallow the morning medications to put on my old soccer and put on my old soccer, soccer clothing. Thanks to my condition, I was exempted from taking part in gym classes at Yamaku, so I didn't get issued with the gym outfit. I'd order some wait, yeah, I ordered some to cover such a contingency, but wearing my old soccer clothes is kind of nostalgic. I can't use them for that anymore, so maybe they can get a new life this way, a bit like me. After all, I'm going if I'm going to start taking care of myself, I can't afford to slack around. I'll start from the basics. Basics, which include keeping the rest of my body in shape along with the little I can do to strengthen my heart. Maybe then I can go back to something approaching a normal life, or at least something something where I'm less likely to fall over dead at any minute. Oh, damn. Oh, he's going to the uh, track field like, um, who is it recommended? The nurse. I'm surprised. Oh, I can hear um, Emmy's, how uh, we call it, her legs. I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one present at the track. Not just that, but it's a face I've seen before. The prosthetic leg girl who bowled me over in the hallway yesterday is running the track literally like a half mechanical gazelle. What was her name again? It was a short one, but I can't remember. I remember. It's Emmy. She's shy. She <laughs> oh my god. I saw. Okay, I saw she and I saw it rhythmically on the bottom, so I mixed it both. I went shy. She seems to be running laps at somewhat easy lope, her prosthetic legs clacking rhythmically on the hard track surface. I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning. Maybe it's just something akin to mine, and the nurse is suppressing the poor girl to jog just like he is suppressing me. I certainly wouldn't be here if it weren't for my health, and it's prompting me to do so. And even with things being like they are, it's only because I want to get out of the way early. Get it out of the way early. The fact that it would be less likely to encounter... The fact that I would be less likely to encounter someone who would witness my pitiful attempts to get in shape was merely a happy accident. I'd leave, but it seems that my former assailant noticed me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. Good morning. Your name is Isao, right? She grins, seemingly pleased that she remembered my name. You may not remember me. No, I, I remember you. Emmy, I knocked you over in the hall yesterday. Yeah, how could I, yeah, how could I forget? Such a, a blunt introduction. Emmy has a Emmy has decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment before giggling. Yeah, sorry about that again. Hmm. Well, so long as you don't make a habit of it, I suppose I'll be fine. Great. I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy consultant the nurse was talking about is that actually you? That's right. Oh. I was expecting someone from the nursing staff. To be honest. What? Are you saying I don't look like I could be a spy? No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid he would have something, someone to watch my every move. Unless you are here to do exactly that. No, I'm here for my own reasons. The nurse just asked me if I could see... Oh, wait, the nurse just asked me if I had seen a messy haired transfer student who looks like he's kind of lost around the track. So, why are you down here? Emmy strikes a dramatic pose. Training! For what? Track! Oh, I see. You're on the track team then. Emmy nods enthusiastically. Yep, I'm one of the better runners too. I'm modest about it too. Hey, you should join up. It's good exercise, you know. I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. Nah, I'm not even sure that I like re that I really like running all that much. Plus, I'm just not that or I'm just not into organized sports, you know. It's true. I never even really got that much into soccer. I mean, I'd run around the, with my friends and all, but that was really the only reason I ever played. It, was, it wasn't it was for the glory to be found on the field, that's for sure. Amy seems to understand my meaning. I see, I see. Not that in the whole... Not into the whole organization thing. But now that you're here, I guess we're going to run together, huh? What? Uh, sure, I guess. Amy seems pleased. Are you going to warm up? Real men don't warm up. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Are you okay, Sal? Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. 
he went there. He just went there. Oh no! You, you should always warm up. Or you always should warm up. Batty sound. She scolds me enthusiast enthusiastically, but then smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. She laughs suddenly. <laughs> Heck, and I don't even have to stretch my legs. As if to confirm her statement, she bounces up down a couple of times, giving a passing impression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades, leg, yeah, leg plates seem to be quite elastic. Let's go! So we both take off around the track, and I can immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. Emmy moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with a sort of a wild abandon. I feel, I find myself concentrating more on running properly. Hands spread right. Oh, and something about hitting on the balls of your feet rather than the heels. I try to match my stride to Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently, I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. Oh gosh, the hiccups are real. I'm not really feeling up to more than a couple of laps a day. I'm going to slow the walk pretty quickly. Okay, oh he stopped. Amy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes a second time. Jeez, that's fast. Or well, unless I was going really, really slow. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in very good shape right now. Amy nods and then grins at me again. Seem she seems to do a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you started, right? Next time, you just have to try and hold out longer, and then longer, and then longer, and eventually you'll be great. I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm going to get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Amy shrugs unconcernedly. Nah, I've got time. I've got plenty of time. I notice that she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? I know the careless shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Isao. Uh, yeah, see ya. I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. And like Emmy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice, it's nice at least to feel like I've taken some semblance of control over my own health. I'll have, to, I'll have to try to keep this up. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired from all the running, so I just want to unwind, but I don't want to break my slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. After taking a long shower anyway, <laughs> I dry myself off and get out of the stall to put on my clothes. Oh my gosh, he is here. The one, the only, Kenji. Out of nowhere, a shadow appears with, within the midst, looming with radiation. Looming and radiating malicious intent, it bursts through the fog. Oh my gosh. So, what are you doing here? What the hell are you? You scared me. What's your problem? I shouldn't be asking that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean all over the place? I want to ask if he's been looking for me like that, stark naked, but hold, I, but I hold my tongue back. I finally realize I'm still naked too, I quickly hold up my, my, oh, I almost said skirt. <laughs> oh my gosh. I finally realize I'm still naked too, I quickly hold my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up, but then why doesn't he wipe them off? Is his vision so bad it's like he's perpetually seeing through fog? You know, your room and, yeah, that's it. Hey man. Hey, I mean, I still have to get up though, though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? What? What is this guy? Oh gosh, this guy is just... Like I said, he's just a treasure full of unexpected things. He puts up an innocent face, innocent face and looks away. Trying very hard to look very casual. It doesn't work. He's as transparent as his window pane size glass, glasses. Talking neutrally like this, wearing nothing, feels awkward. Actually, somehow it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked, to say nothing of the fact that he's naked as well. I try to brush out the feeling with little success. Money? Sure. Awesome. Wait, why do you need it? Uh, can't you just give me it? Can't you just give it to me because I'm, I'm, wait. Can't you just give it to me because I had the good will not to run through your pockets while you were in the shower? I could have. But exercise of strength. And then, isn't it the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. 
This makes no sense. If it's the thought that counts, it should withhold it should withhold payment since his thoughts were so clearly impure and his intentions were probably more sinister. Since he can't tell me what they are, I say as much to him. I'm offended, man. But if that's your game, then fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order pizza, and I only have most of the cost of the pizza. I need your help for the rest. I, gu I get some of that pizza. I get some of that pizza too, right? No. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, I want to give you some. But you have class. You don't have time to get pizza. What, what about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza to pay the guy. And then eat it. It's not easy. You have to obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you and the pizza. And they will ask for a slice. <laughs> God, it's hard. It's a hard world out there. Everyone wants a piece. Then you're left with the pizzle, uh, pizza-less, almost a puzzle. And then you're left with the pizza-less in an unforgiving world. It's happened before. That's how I know. It's kind of like how you're at school and you have gum. And then you try to stealthily try to take one. And then someone sees you and you're like, can I have some? And then like, it's, just, it's just a process over like that. And then eventually you run out of gum because everyone's asked for you to have gum. Which kind of sucks. But hey, you know, I don't know. Every day, I plan my vengeance so that when the people who are wrong me order the pizza, I will be there. Every, ever, vig ever vigilant. Kenji strikes a dramatic pose completely without irony. But yeah, I only need like 400 yen. Please, you're my only hope. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza. It's too far. I try not to go out unless it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. Let me tell you what happened the last time I went out with, without carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside. I can't remember what I was doing. Something. Standing. Maybe wondering how I got there. And then, out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of lightning splitting the sky. Like how you split a sandwich into two equal pieces to make it more manageable to hold and eat. A bird crapped on my head. Oh, God. It was the second most shocking moment in my life. What was the first? He ignores me and keeps going. I want to grab him and shake him. Is he trying to keep the momentum? I'll go with that. Even if it's more likely he's just he just didn't hear me. It was like the, in the openings to some kind of anime show. You know that there's always that part where the main dude is fighting his rival and they fly each other in class stores and there's like big dramatic color oars and zoom. It was like that, but with poo. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. So yeah, I need some money, please. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging, man. I only need like a thousand yen. Oh my gosh, I thought it was 400 yen. Okay, what? I'll pay you back, I swear. You, you better. That's what it means to borrow stuff. I don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. You have one week. Ah! <laughs> Kenji winces and makes a noise like a dying cow. A particularly disturbing fact that his baton is conducting freely. Oh my goodness. You're not supposed to be so tight about tight assed about money between brothers and arms, man. Men have it bad enough as it is. Did you know that male porn stars only make have an hour of what female porn stars think? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything less unless you're a porn star. So maybe I am a porn star on the side. Surely, oh my gosh, what is it? Where is this going? So I, I, oh my god. So maybe I am a porn star on the side. Struggling to make ends me. <laughs> That's a fight to, to, <laughs> That's a fight to a feminist agenda. And you can't even spot me in your crumbs, you bastard. Nobody understands. Nobody. Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? This feminist agenda is stuff again. This stuff is important. I can't see that you don't give a shit. But this serious. This is serious. Here, feminists. Here. Feminists are a dangerous enemy. Make no mistake. You take them lightly, and you wake up in the morning with a knife in your back. Bam! Out of nowhere. How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? Women are terrible at stabbing things. I thought you just said, don't take them lightly. Well, I mean, not take them lightly with big things. Individually, they're not a threat. But if there is some kind of war, like a big war with men on one side and the feminist forces on the other side, it would be pretty ugly. And that day will come when the feminists come out of their central top secret worldwide feminist headquarters and say, It's on now, motherfuckers. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. There's no big worldwide feminist headquarters building. Where would they even hide that? I mean, it had to be massive. You couldn't hide that on Earth. Someone would notice a big fortress with women only in it. Who said it was on Earth? Oh my gosh. I turn away for Kenji to start practicing frowning faces in the mirror so that I can figure out what kind of frown will best express my emotions. You can't see me from the dis this distance anyway. Which unfortunately unfortunately, means that he just keeps on ranting without any regard to sense or sensibility. Yeah, there was, there's a war going on. 
and one not many know about, but it's a great one that will one day be boil over and encompasses all the known worlds. World. Yeah, all the known world. Then we will have to pick sides. We will have to make a stand and make a stand. In fact, it's happening right now. Imagine it. The bloody battlefield. A vicious conflict without the end. Oh my gosh. I almost gave up. When I thought this cause was silly, when I grew tired of the bleakness of our fight, and I mistook the time and power without the feminist raid, and thought the end was near. But then I realized that if I gave up, it would be all over. And I was like, whoa. And I knew I had to get serious because I was the last sane man in the insane world. It's about duty. It must be a pretty crappy movement if all the hinges, if all of it hinges on one naked guy ranting in the bathroom at another naked guy. <laughs> so can I have the money? He's blocking the way out. It's getting cold because I'm still naked and I want to go to class. So I agreed to spot him the money. Awesome. Thanks, dude. We should go bowling later on. Bowling? Yeah, it's the ultimate sport. There are almost no women bowlers either, making it the almost manliest sport. Should I wear my pink bowling shirt with matching shoes, or the pastel green with flower accents? There are bowling clothes? Maybe. Anyway, you had better pay me back. I could pay you back in stuff, right? Oh my. I don't have the time to ask him for ask him to elaborate on what that means. I don't know. I have to go. To, I have to get to class. You're kind of in the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to hold you up. And I have some stuff to do my... And I have some stuff to do myself. The time has come. The time for what? I'm, I just like saying that. <laughs> okay, now the time has really come. For what? I have to use the bathroom. Get out of it. I was just going to. And what does that mean? It's a big bathroom. So? I have to be alone. Or I can't... Or I can't go. The pressure. <laughs> okay. What if someone else comes in? I think I'll think of something. I give him my practice frown, and it looks like and it looks kind of silly, reflected on his, in his glasses. He either doesn't notice or doesn't see anything, so I get dressed and run back to my room, feeling as though an an, an eternity has passed since I woke up. Oh man, the reading, so much, but it's fun. I'm gonna have to end it here, guys. Hopefully, you guys. <laughs> like the whole conversation with me and Kenji. I, I, like I said, I told you, it was a freaking treasure chest filled with unexpected things to come. So hopefully, you know, hopefully he has more stuff like that to, to come. Oh my gosh. Okay, like and favorite, enjoy. I'm Alex Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.